Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to do a very simple looping cloth simulation. So if any of you have ever done cloth simulations in Blender, you're aware of the fact that um, a cloth simulation is very random, it's dynamic. So how it starts and how it ends isn't going to be the same. Therefore, making a loop is almost impossible unless we do a little bit of a cheat. So this isn't the most perfect method, but it's going to be the quickest method. So essentially, our cloth simulation can start and end exactly the same and therefore we can make it a loop. So this is something a lot of people have asked me about and especially people who like to do motion graphics and loops. So I hope this little technique, though it isn't perfect um, and you know there could be better techniques out there, I think it'll give you the best results for the amount of time you put into this. So let's learn how to do this and yes it is the Australian sports flag because I am in Australia and I thought you know people have done the Australian flag a lot so I'll just do this one. It's a bit different so let's jump in. So let's make a flag to demonstrate. I think it's a really good starting point. So we're going to select everything and press delete. Then we're just going to go shift A, add in a plane. There we go, add in a mesh plane. Then we're just going to go into our edit mode. And with everything selected, we're just going to go S, X, and 2. So S, X, 2 to scale it two times long to S. Control R, you'll see the yellow line. Just double click when you see it to add in a segment. And then just press A to select everything, right click and go subdivide. Then go to the subdivision tab and let's give this something like 30 subdivisions. Close this. And then in our front view with everything active, we're going to go RX90 and hit enter. And then let's grab these verts over here. Let's go over to our object data properties and we're just simply just going to go to the vertex group and go plus. With this new group, we're going to go ahead and assign this. So essentially that just makes these selected in this group. So if we now go into our object mode, we go over to our physics, give this a cloth. Um, let's just make sure we're on frame one for now. We're going to go down to the shape. Under the pin groups here, we can select that group we created. We can also go to our collisions, enable self collision. That way the cloth can interact with itself and right click and then go shade smooth. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, our cloth is going to fall like this. Nice. Let's go back to frame one. We want some interactions. We're going to go shift A. Let's just quickly go to our force fields. Let's just add in wind. In our front view, so we're just going to go G, move it over. R to rotate it around 90 degrees. Move it back a bit. Let's go over here to our physics. Let's give it a strength of 5,400. Hit enter. And let's just press S just to scale it a bit. Something like this. Now from frame one, if we hit the space bar, we're gonna see we have this cloth simulation. How cool is that? So now let's just also make sure just to save this. I'm just saving this to my desktop. And we wanna grab our flag and under our physics, under the cloth, we're gonna go all the way down to the cache. We'll just go with 250 frames and 250 frames on the cache. And let's just bake this into our blend file. So now that we have that baked, you can see this blue line. We're going to go to Edit, Preferences, go to your add-ons, and then just come over here in the search and just type in MDD, so M double D. You're going to see an option, Export New Tech MDD Format. Make sure that is ticked, okay? So if it's not, just enable it and just save the preference. Close this box, and now, with the flag selected, we can go over to File, export and go all the way down to pointcache.mdd. Select an area on your computer. I'm just going to select my desktop and call it MDD. I'm going to go export. You can call it whatever you want, by the way. And then I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to go here and in fact, I'm going to go to my physics and just get rid of the cloth. Okay, just get rid of it. And I'm also going to grab the wind and I'll just delete that. So now we're going to grab our flag. We're going to go over to our modifiers, add modifier, search, and let's type in cache. And let's get a mesh cache. Click on this file and then just go to your desktop wherever and get that MDD file, accept. And now we have our cache back here again. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to find a starting position. So this is where our cloth is going to start. So you can drag through and that can be anywhere for you. So I'm going to try and get it more early on. So maybe somewhere here. For me, that's going to be 55. It might be different for you. So I'm going to go and with it at 55, I'm going to come to the drop down and apply this. So now this is the shape. So if I go into edit mode, that's what I've got. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go add modifier again and search and go cache, get a mess, mesh cache. And now we can go to our file path, select that MDD file again and accept. And now all we have to do is make it how long we want. So for example, we can go to 120, right? So I'll just drag through till I get kind of somewhere like this. Yeah, okay, I'll go to maybe 112. Might be different for you. You can pick wherever you want. And then let's just go ahead and drag that down to zero and give it a keyframe. And in this case, I'll bring my end frames till it matches that. So in this case, it's 112. And you can do whatever you want. And then you're gonna just come a little bit forward. So in my case, I'll just come a few frames forward. I'll give this a value of one. And now it means at this point, it's gonna be using the cache. And I click on this little button here to add in a keyframe. So now what's happening, it's starting in this position over here at frame one. Actually, it's not, it's um, 55, remember? Um, so I'm just gonna start this at 55. There we go. Remember, that's where I applied it at first. So at frame 55, it's now gonna be the same at frame 112. And it's switching over. So from frame 55, it's gonna be a cache all the way to 108. And then all of a sudden it switches and it has zero influence on the cache. And that allows us to kind of fake a looping cloth simulation. So now you can see it ends and starts the same. If I go to the front and I go to the end frame, they look exactly the same. And the cool thing about it is once you have your two keyframes here, you can actually change the length here. So I might go up to 140, then grab these two keyframes and go G and just move them up till the last one is on the end frame. And now it's looping over to here. So let's have a look at that. Okay, and you can slide this around wherever you want. So that is how easy it is to make a looping cloth simulation, one that starts and ends the same way. Like I said, I know this isn't perfect, but this is a quick and dirty way you can get a looping cloth simulation in Blender. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time for another Blender tutorial.